Hey everybody. Well, wanted to create a video that talks about process as we apply this for scalability across an organization. So this is intended to be a supplemental video to the process learning that we do in one of our sessions and to work as kind of a reinforcement and training tool for others within the organization. So let's get into it. Well, here's the, the starting point. If you can't describe what you're doing as a process, you don't know what you are doing. And the reason why I like this quote so much is because at the end of the day, if you have a good command of what you're doing and what should happen, you should be able to say, you do this, then this, then this, and this. If you can't be able, if you can't communicate that, then there is a real question. Do you really have command of what you're trying to accomplish? Uh, the guy that said this, this William, William Edwards Deming, Deming uh, he was a guy back from the 50s and 60s that was really focused on continual improvement of quality. And let's, you know, as we continue to dive in, process is the backbone of, of repeatability and improvement, right? When we get our process, we get to basically see the same things happening over and over again. And it's when we have that repeatability that we can continuously improve things. And so EOS is not going to take a document everything approach. We're going to take a 2080 approach where we try to identify those 20% of the steps that yield 80% of the results. And the key for us is simplicity because simplicity is, is essential for people to communicate and internalize all of these things. The, the reason why we got the pictures here on the left is this is the old Model T type of assembly line. You can see it was really, really basic compared to what we have today. And the simple reality to it is, is that after years and years and years of process improvement, this is what we can turn things into. That's what we're going for in our businesses. Maybe not quite as dramatic and hopefully faster than 100 years, but that same type of, of concept. So let's, let's talk about this. Our, we, the first piece that we start is what we call the three-step process documenter. And so let's talk about these three steps. The first step is the identification of the core processes in our business. And, a lot of times when we start to work within a, an organization, you say, okay, what are our core processes? You'll start to hear people start to talk about a hundred different things that need to be documented and written down. And so this is where we say, okay, hold on, hold on. Let's break this down a little bit. We're trying to identify the most important processes in the company. And some of the better candidates for this are gonna be those processes that wind through an organization and touch a lot of different departments. They're just very impactful across the company. Another one that's a really good candidate is our processes that are essential for the success of the organization. If we've got a distribution business, sales is gonna be a process that's just gonna be key for any distribution business. Um, it's not a listing of all the possible processes that can exist. And a lot of times when you really get into what the core processes of our business is, that stuff that's gonna make up the kind of secret sauce of our business, it tends to be anywhere from about six to 12 things. So in this example here, we're just going to basically say maybe it's sales pipeline, production schedule, sourcing and ordering product, hiring and onboarding. These may be the six kind of core processes that we are looking at. Now, the second step in the process is the documenting of the process. And so the way that we do this, and I'm showing one of the ones that we do here with Outpace, is it's, it's text-based. We actually just do it with a bullet form, and it's major step, which is a bullet, and then the minor steps underneath it. And we just kind of do this all the way through for the beginning and the end. And, then, and when we talk about this, um, and ideally each process is gonna be anywhere from one to three pages when we're done with it. So I think this is kind of the big part of the three-step documenter. So we, I want to go in with a little more illustration and example here. So let's get through the example of this. Let's, the first place that we're going to start is the beginning and the end of the process. So if we were going to define this in our sales process, maybe the beginning is the reaching out to client. That's where our, our process is going to start. And we're going to end it at submitting the order to finance. So we basically are saying, okay, this is the extent of the process. We're going to figure out where we start. and We're going to figure out where we end. After that, we're going to want to identify all the major steps in between. And when we do this, we want to basically kind of identify with some symmetry 
all the major steps kind of equidistant from each other. We don't want to have like the 27 steps at the very beginning and the six steps at the end. We want to basically get the kind of major milestones that we have to accomplish that are relatively equidistant to each other. And so when we look at this, we start off with reach out to client and our last step is going to be submitting the order to finance. And so usually it doesn't take forever, particularly if, if you take the person that really knows how things work and they'll say, okay, maybe we got a next thing we do is we hold an intro meeting. Then we present a demo. Then we submit a proposal. Then we secure a verbal. Then we send a contract with the order form. And then we obtain the client signature. And then we submit the order to finance. Maybe this is the major milestones that we're looking at as we go through this process. Perfect. The next step after that is we're now going to start to add some detail these kind of major minor steps and <laughs> major minor the minor steps that are kind of significant for each one of these different areas so for reach out for a client we're going to add that client to salesforce and then we're going to outreach with whether it's email or telephone if we're holding our intro meeting we're going to present three uniques we're going to hold out qualification we're going to fill out a qualification form we're going to secure that demo meeting if, if things work right then we're going to present our demo and we go through these individual steps. We're not going to try to have 50 different bullets here. We're going to basically have the handful that really kind of capture what each step has to be. And some of these can be a little longer. It's OK. But we're, what we're really trying to do is get clarity about what's happening. So when somebody basically looks at this, they get to understand it relatively quickly. Now, a lot of times, when you do this, it's gonna drive a lot of answers around ownership and, and the need for some simple tools. So if we use this as an example, we've got kind of, we gotta add the client to Salesforce a little later down, we gotta fill out qualification forms. This may be the sales operations organization, which may be separate than sales, maybe it's part of it. And they might need to go create instructional sheets or videos about how to add clients to Salesforce and how to fill out a qualification form. We may actually just say the qualification form is self-explanatory and that is owned by sales ops. They'll make it available to you. Um, when we look at the demo demonstration, how to overcome pain points, this might be the product organization that's got to make sure that we're trained by everybody. And so the point that I'm trying to get to here is that we could make an argument that the qualification, the qualification form needs a process unto itself. And that's where I would say, don't overcomplicate things. If it's just a form, fill out the form. We don't need to document every single detail here. We're trying to represent the kind of the major steps that represent 80% of the work. Ideally, an intelligent person who's a right person, right seat, will get the qualification form, look at whatever supporting materials or tools are available and fill it out. Okay, same thing. We're gonna do this all the way top to bottom and it's gonna help us understand who has to get involved with what. It's gonna help us understand who owns which step of this process as we're doing it. So now that we've done this, now we've documented one of our processes, the third step is that we're gonna bring each of these processes together. We're gonna to create this into, it can be a single document, it can be in a single file area. Um, personally, I like bringing it all together into a single document that I can print. And so here's our example, we call it the Outpace way. And all of our, sessions everything we do is broken down by the eos process and so we have all of our actions that go around across those steps so if i take the outpace way pretty much all of our work is really broken around eight different processes that we have that are caught in a single document and it helps drive alignment across the organization and helps us improve what we're doing as we basically study this so this is the three-step process documenter where we basically go through step one, identify what the processes are, step two, document the processes, and step three, put them together in a single document. So this is the, the first half of our process component. Now, if you remember, this is way back when with our 90-minute meetings, the process wedge of the six areas that we wanna get strong in, documenting the process is one of the two things we got to do. The second one is this concept followed by all. And I think the followed by all is the biggest challenge that I see to people trying to deploy process is where they struggle. A good process produces good results. This is Nick Saban from uh, University of Alabama football. Um, what a simple concept, but man, it is, it is profoundly key because I'll tell you the things that I hear all the time is, oh, we have a process. It's just a bad process. 
Okay, well, that sounds us a lot of good. Oh, we have processes, it's just nobody follows it. This is what we're gonna fix right now. So we got our four key steps followed by all. So the number one thing is train everyone on the full process. Yes, I do have process fails <laughs> on a few pictures here. So clearly a picture of Africa with a shirt that says Asia, that process failed somewhere. And it looks like it failed in a couple places if it actually got out of a manufacturing facility or textile facility and actually made it into a retail and, uh, location too. So maybe a couple processes have failed. But the first thing that we want to do is we want to train everybody on the process from beginning to end. And what we're trying to do, and the reason why we do this is we want everybody to understand that this is an assembly line. If you cut the corner here, you may be screwing this up at the 18th step. Don't do that. Understand what the big picture is and get your piece of it done effectively. All right, second step and followed by all, measure. And yep, here we go, here's our Batman backpack with the Superman picture. Another process failure that we have here, again, came out of the uh, textile place and made it into a store still. Um, once we create that process, it should be doing something. It should be improving something. It should be making something work correctly. So that means it should be showing up in one or multiple scorecards, showing the results of what we're trying to do. If we have a sales process, we wanna take a look at whether that aging timer or the win rate has improved or if the aging timer has gotten shorter on how long it takes to do a deal. If we have a manufacturing process, we wanna make sure that we have higher quality or that the, um, the schedule is moving faster. Whatever it might be, we want to add the results of those scorecard items into the scorecards or the, the process items into that scorecard. The third step, <laughs> this one's funny too, right? Another process failure. Um, the third step is all around the uh, making sure that we know who's accountable for it. So we call it the LMA step, but every single process should have an owner. And if it's in a scorecard, we should be marking who's paying attention to it and kind of talking about who that owner is there. <clears throat> so we should be capturing that in the measurement component, but we also wanna make sure that it's clear. If you've got the process that's responsible for the sales process, you've got it. That is part of your responsibility. And we wanna make sure that, that person understands it, they're looking out for it and doing the last step, which is they're improving it as needed. And again, one more process failure as we talk about them. So um, if our process is working right, everybody understands what it is, we're getting into the scorecards, it's accountable and it's getting updated as needed. And some of these ridiculous mistakes that I'm showing you here will not be happening ideally in your business. So this is pretty much our process tool. It's a pretty straightforward function. I love the ease of it and I, I know that when you look at it, you can go, that, it can't be that easy. It is, it is that easy. Start with these processes. You can add more as time goes by. You may wanna add some more granularity, but do not be building those 60 to 80 page manuals that no one ever reads. And then as soon as somebody changes a screenshot, it makes the whole manual irrelevant. All right, summary. And the reason I got McDonald's here is because talk about a process masterpiece. You know, they, those, things, anything from the Big Mac to the Quarter Pounder, these things are being made all over the world for years and years and years following the exact same process. It is so impressive. Three-step process documented. We're going to identify the core processes. One, two, document each process. Three, we're going to bring those processes together into a single place so that this starts to become our operations manual about how we do what we do exceptionally. Then after that, we're gonna then do the follow by all component. We're gonna train, we're gonna measure, we're gonna use LMA, the accountability of it. And we're gonna make sure that we are constantly improving these processes over and over and over. So hope this all makes sense to you. If you have any questions, feel free to give me an email at rick at outpaceenterprises.com or give me a ring and we can uh, go through any type of situational uh, concerns that you may have. So really appreciate everybody's time. Thank you.